Come with us on a journey into the unknown, the unexplained, and the unbelievable. We will test your senses and challenge your beliefs. A world where science and religion clash. Or do they? You will meet real people and hear real stories, but you will not believe. You will witness strange sights and hear strange sounds, but you will not believe. This is the New England Ghost Project. Welcome to the Nightmare. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Ghost Chronicles Next Generation, the Christmas edition. Woohoo! Right. And with me, early. of course, uh, I am, you know, that guy. And with me is the blonde bombshell herself, Miss Ann Kerrigan. Hi, how are you? So this is our first Christmas show. Yes, we really it is. Did. So did you get me anything? Our first, no. What the hell not? Wow. I'm not getting you anything. That's right. <laughs> you got your swearing. It's Christmas time. You're not supposed to swear. I don't swear. I have my Jesus sweatshirt on. You have on. your Jesus sweatshirt on. I am, <laughs> I'm right in the fest of the spirit, so I, I am definitely good. <laughs> So anyways, you are I actually... I left mine home. Yeah, yeah. You are actually seeing us as well as uh, hearing us on Tojinet, maybe. Unfortunately. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, on Tojinet, uh, Pararex, maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Crystal Tear Radio. If we're lucky, And yes. uh, Ghost Channel and uh, Jeff Belanger uh, Newsreels. Yeah. Uh, which will be on 30 odd minutes, I'm sure because he's got no material at all. That's right. Yeah, yeah. he's going to have to use us. He has no choice. So anyways, so. Uh, the Christmas spirit is here, and I'm sure you have developed... <laughs> Thank God. You have developed a, <laughs> uh, a uh, special cemetery tripping for us, right? Of course I have, and yes. It's all about the Christmas, We right? have a special edition, kind of Christmassy, kind of cemetery tripping. Yeah. All right, so... So we like to roll it? Should we go ahead and play that? I think so. All right. Off to cemetery tripping. Maybe. Welcome to Cemetery Tripping, where I will feature a different cemetery in each episode that I hope you will seek out and enjoy as much as I do. As an avid taphophile, or lover of tombstones, I spend a lot of time in the local New England area in the beautiful and historic cemeteries we have here. The stones here are like no others, and I have literally thousands of pictures of the intricate and symbolic carvings found on them. You can see my pictures on Facebook by doing a search for cemetery tripping. Since we're beginning the Christmas season, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about an angel. Angels are seen constantly in funerary art guiding the newly departed to heaven and as symbols of hope for those left behind. They are seen holding crosses, flowers, wreaths, anchors, and even swords. There is one angel in particular, however, who is my all-time favorite, and that would be the Angel of Grief. She is also known as the Weeping Angel. The Angel of Grief is a very popular angel and has been reproduced and photographed countless times. She can be found in Italy, Canada, England, Germany, Costa Rica, and of course the United States. However, the original sculpture was created by the artist William Wetmore Story in 1894, and she serves as the gravestone of the artist and his wife at the Protestant Cemetery in Rome. An article written in the September 1896 issue of Cosmopolitan Magazine stated, The loss of the wife of his youth, whom he survived but a year, was a bitter blow and with her passed his interest in affairs. It was only when his children suggested that he should make a monument to her memory that he consented to resume work. The design he chose was the Angel of Grief, and it is wrought to exquisite finish, as are the statues modeled in his summer prime. When this was done, he left the studio, never to return. I am fortunate enough to have one of the reproduction angels fairly close to my home, in the Hingham Cemetery in Hingham, Massachusetts. This is not a tiny sculpture and is an exciting and breathtaking monument to come upon as you stroll through the cemetery. One of the reasons that I love this sculpture is because of the emotion that is conveyed through her. The sense of utter despair, sadness, and devotion to the deceased that seems to rack her body as she leans over the grave and cries. It's truly a sight to behold in person. 
The grave that the angel cries over in Hingham Cemetery is that of Maria Hooper, who died in April 1891. The Hingham Cemetery angel was carved in Italy by numerous craftsmen who each specialized in a particular part, such as wings, hands, or a face, and took a very long time to complete. Apparently, when it finally arrived in Boston, the crate was dropped onto the pier as it was being unloaded, breaking the statue into numerous pieces, and the work had to be started all over again. A true work of art in a local cemetery? A priceless gift, one that I hope you get to enjoy in person at some point. But in the meantime, you can see more of the Weeping Angel in my cemetery pictures on Facebook in the Hingham Cemetery album. Wow, that was uh, really interesting. Yes, it was. I, I've never seen Thank so you. many stone angels in my life. <laughs> well, it's really kind of mostly one stone angel. Oh, it's the same angel? Well, yeah. Some of them. Okay, Some whatever. Of them. She's a great angel. Fine. Merry Christmas. Go on. And uh, <laughs> don't you have something to say? We would like to acknowledge our studio audience tonight. We like to acknowledge that this is filmed in front of a live studio audience. That's right. There it Isn't is. Isn't that awesome? There it is. There it is. The sound of applause. So, anyways. But, we, yeah, we want to give a shout out to Nate who is always in our chat room. Right. Sometimes <laughs> he, he's called something else, though, He right? came on down, uh, well, I don't know. Can we give away his code name? Can we give away your code name? Nate? No? You can talk, you know. It doesn't yeah. hurt. Trust me. Anyways, Nate, Nate is always all in right, chat. Nate, thanks a lot. We, Whatever. we appreciate it. And he came on all the way down to East Bridgewater to uh, see us tonight. And speaking so, of coming all the way down from someplace, uh, I'd like to introduce our guest. Yeah who uh, is a man that needs no introduction. There he is. There he is. Great to be here with you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll do my best not to crash the, uh, crash the mood Right. Ghost Thanks. Chronicles Next Generation. Yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a unique show in that we have no idea what we're doing. Right. Yeah, Pretty much. So, yeah. Sadly. But uh, I couldn't tell. Uh, that, it doesn't show, know, does it? In, in all reality, I says, you know, because of our professionalism, I mean, how could we improve the show? And that's get somebody who's smarter and better looking than <laughs> us. So that's why we brought you on. Appreciate that. There no you go. problem. No there problem. You go. And for those who don't know who uh, this guy this is, guy. Um, if you go on our website, you can see his picture. It, it has his name underneath it. Uh, so there you go. The, I don't know how to follow up that introduction other than to say I'm humbled by it. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for Ron. I've known Ron God. for a number of years and as well uh, back when I was You're a, really trying to bring guest. us back into the reality. I'm trying to bring you? us to anything. <laughs> I'm trying to wrap this into some kind of cohesive ball. It'll never happen. <laughs> so oh. you were on WBSM, right? No, not WBSM. What was the station up there? CCM. WCCM. Mm -hmm. Uh, years ago, when, right. when Ghost Chronicles was first uh, that, that AM broadcast, and back then there were only you know like three or four paranormal radio shows at all, right. and uh, and and there were only maybe a dozen or so guests that you could potentially get. So I lucked out. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I went through the entire internet, which was brand new back, back then. In, right. Back in the Stone Age. You actually yeah. had to use a crank <laughs> to get on the internet. That's right. <laughs> and you found me last. So yeah, thank right. you. And and but in all seriously, I want to say Jeff Belanger. Because that's who go. he is. Thank you. Um, I've known Jeff for quite a while. In fact, when I first got involved uh, with the paranormal, um, he was kind of like my mentor. He he led me to where I am today. So everything that's I am, scary. I owe to him. So oh. wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. <laughs> I take no credit for any whoa. of this. <laughs> yeah, <you do>. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been it's been quite a journey, you know, just watching the the paranormal field grow over the last God, you know, 15, 20 years now. Um, the way it's evolved because of television shows, pop culture, you know, internet, all of that stuff. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's so out of the closet now, which is interesting. You know? Yeah, but I mean, in the old days, it was kind of cool, too. It really was. Sure. I mean, when you were on the internet, really, there weren't that many paranormal sites. Ghost Village was the paranormal site. Yeah. It was absolutely yeah. the only one on there. Mm -hmm. uh, other than, what was that other one? Uh, oh, it was Ghost, Hollow Hill. Hollow Hill, Hollow Ghost.org. There's, um, there's a few that, that go back to the really? 90s like we yeah. do, but 
Um, yeah, it was, it was 1999. Um, I, I had a couple of articles I'd written for newspapers back in the mid-90s when I was uh, a journalist. And around October, you go writing ghost features. And uh, October of 1999, we put up ghostvillage.com, just six little web pages and a uh, little note that said, tell us your ghost stories, tell us your ghost encounters. And that first year, I think I got like five or six, you know, and... Um, <laughs> that many. And uh, yeah, and now it's... Uh, you Those know, are the only people who know how to use the internet. Right. <laughs> they were all on the internet then. And, uh, and now we've six. got over 50,000 pages of They're content. They're probably using a dial-up. <laughs> yeah. We, we were all using dial-up. Yeah. Are you kidding? Right. Mm -hmm. Remember that sound? <laughs> would connect and all that. But yeah, no, and, and the internet <laughs> played such a huge role because if the internet's taught, taught us anything at all, it's that whatever weird thing you're into, and I mean anything, I don't even just mean paranormal. Oh, yeah. Whatever weird thing you're into, someone Come else is into it too. Saturday night, you'll see. I've, I've seen that website. <laughs> yeah, okay. I've paid nine ninety five a month to watch yeah, really? it. Uh, oh, so, yeah. yeah. yeah so, yeah. Um, so whatever it is, and, and it creates this community uh, of people that, that find each other, that, that, you know, there's one or two in your town, but when you start going global, you realize there's a lot of people out there. And I think the more you talk about the paranormal, that was always the point, you know. I don't have any answers, you know, I, but, but the more you, you just promote the discussion and you have people talking about what they experienced, what they went through, uh, it's a good thing. And, and really great stuff comes from that. And I think, you know, you look at the Gallup polls, just 10 years apart, you know. Um, uh, in the early uh, 2000s, it was something like 30% believe in, in ghosts, and it went up to over 40% 10 right. years later, which is a significant jump mm -hmm. uh, in the same population. And I think the reason is, I, I don't think really it's, cha I just think people feel comfortable talking about it. I don't mm -hmm. think there's more ghosts now than there ever were before or anything like that. I just think people feel more comfortable talking about these things that are, that are you know, part of the human experience. Uh, you know, maybe it's the fringe, but but maybe it's, it's uh, a little more common than we previously thought. Well, the interesting thing about Definitely. it, I mean, I was on the uh, Harvard Pilgrim Appeals Board, and I mean, I sat on Name the Name dropper? Yeah, I know it. <laughs> and I sat with doctors and psychiatrists and sociologists, lawyers, right. sorry about that, mm -hmm. uh, and the top officials from Harvard Pilgrim, and they all knew what I did, so I'd always have to go to the meetings early to because they wanted to hear what happened, and and they had their own stories too. Sure. But they weren't they weren't going to talk about it in like a board meeting. But you know, right. they are just like, oh, this is kind of cool. You know, somebody else, and yeah. they all let their hair loose. And yeah, they, they came out of the closet. It's so funny because wherever uh, wherever you go and and you talk about it, and I mean, I did a talk. I think it was last year for our local Kiwanis Club, and um, afterwards, you know, you get the people that come up to you and they say, well. You know, and they kind of look around and say, well, this happened to me. You know, yeah, everybody seems to have a story, um, you know, but they don't want to necessarily share it with the body at large, you know. But of I think course. it is more accepted you know, it, than it ever was. It really, when you're talking about ghosts, you're asking a big question. Is there life after death? You know, and that, that's what it comes down to. You know, does something happen after we die? And when, you're, when you talk about ghost stories and haunted places, you get to strip out all the weirdness of religion, all the dogmas, all the strange rules. Because if you go in front of a group and you say, I want to tell you about my religious beliefs, everyone squirms. But if you say, hey, I heard this place is haunted and I want to tell you about what I've, what I've gathered on it so far, everyone goes, ooh, cool. Right. Because you get to ask those very spiritual questions, you know, in a very safe way. You know, in a way that's, and, and if you want to say, ghosts are just a story, they're not real, okay, fine. You can put your mind there and you can still appreciate the story. Or if you want to say, whoa, if there are ghosts, that means, you know, there, there's, there's something more to this human experience after we die and I got to come to grips with it, that's all right as well. But when you, when you account for how many people that have not just seen apparitions, that's, that's one end of the spectrum, that's huge, right? That's the far end, but, um, you know, heard, heard voices sensed things, had dreams that were more than just dreams, you know, coincidences that seemed beyond chance. That, if you include all that, I think you're talking about the overwhelming majority of the population. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. And and to, to me, you know, kind of when I first started, I said, well, I'm going to prove or disprove that the parallel exists. And I soon realized that I couldn't do that. No. There are too many people, first of all, even if they had a ghost came up and slapped them across the face, they still wouldn't believe. Sure. Uh, so, and there were other people, nothing can happen and they believe. So it's, it's more of a belief thing. So, so now it's really just open up to the discussion and, and you know, bring out what are your beliefs. And, and if it challenges your beliefs a little bit, so be it. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's such an amazing uh, journey. It really has been for me. And it's, we'll never prove it, and that's okay. It's not, it's not a study of science because it's, it's not, I've so far, I've, I've never found anything that's repeatable. 
right? Science has to be repeatable. You have to set up an experiment, and if you do it or Ann does it, it repeats. I've never seen that with anything paranormal. But uh, at the same time, there certainly are factors. There's, there's, um, you know, there's different things that seem to happen and, and commonalities among the phenomena. But, but it all comes down to whether you're talking about ghosts or Bigfoot, monsters, aliens, or whatever. The, the, the one, um, the, the one thread that ties between all of them, well, really two. One, there's, there has to be a human witness, right? There has right. to be a human. Even if you set up a, a remote camera. There's still a human witness That's watching right. the footage. So you can't remove the living person from the equation. Is the house haunted if there's no one in it? It does, it's irrelevant. Yeah. It's, it, it, it doesn't matter if it is or it isn't. You need a person. Exactly. And the second is, is this thing called time, right? This, this timeline. Because what if all of these strange things are something that make perfect sense somewhere on the timeline? but maybe not necessarily right now. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the things I've been toying with lately, especially the last year or so, um, uh, the uh, notion of time travel. You know? um, and, and could that explain? Could there be this weird paranormal unified theory, this idea that, that uh, you know, Bigfoot is something that makes perfect sense somewhere on the timeline? Not right now, but maybe 150,000 years ago. Is it really time travel or is it more time... Uh, slips. Really. I call them time slips. Okay. Yeah, because time travel sounds more like you, you you're controlling you it, and, purpose, and have right it and there. have it on purpose. And yeah. what I found is that there's no controlling this. Um, the experiences I've been gathering, you know, are people that have experienced um, not just seeing a ghost, and I would differentiate a ghost from a time slip. So a ghost experience might be you walk into an old historic restaurant and you see a, a woman in period dress walk through and disappear and you go whoa that was weird she was completely out of place I would call that a ghost experience I've talked to people that have gone into a restaurant an old one and all of a sudden uh, this gentleman opened the door for his wife walked in his wife disappeared he looks on the wall there's there's no more electricity there's no flat screen TVs there's no neon signs it's oil lamps and everything you know as his best guess was like 1880s and there was a guy at the bar who turned and looked him up and down as he walked in and he just went What's happening? And he said, you know, it felt like it lasted like 20, 30 seconds. He said, realistically, he took two steps, so it couldn't have been more than five seconds or so, and then it was gone. Mm -hmm. And the modern scene was back. The TVs, the, the electricity, his wife's back, all of that stuff. And he just went, what, what just happened? I was the one out of place. I stepped into a different time. Wow. And his best guess is just, this, is, this must have been what this place looked like in the 1880s. He didn't want to. He didn't mean to. He wasn't really scared by it. It was just so, so quick and overwhelming. Then he wrote down every detail on, a, on a, uh, some scraps of paper. He showed me scans of it, and he's just never forgotten the experience. And he's not alone. I've, I've been talking to more and more people that right. have had these experiences. I mean, Mark they were the scene. who you and I both know. Sure, Gettysburg, right. yeah. Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. He talks that classic one. It was at Gettysburg College, I believe, right. where the two girls go down in the elevator. It opens up. They're inside a, a Confederate uh, operating room, and the, and the people actually see him. They're cognizant that the woman in there, and they actually head towards him. And of course, they, they beat the button and the door is <laughs> right, closed, right. and they come back down with the security guard, and there's nothing there. And, and that's the kind of thing where, you know, if there truly is interaction with, with the past, you, and I'm looking for this, by the way, I'm looking through old journals and, and history books where someone says, you know, uh, like at the Gettysburg Address, says, Someone was there who looked completely out of place. You know, I, saw, I witnessed a, a man who, you know, was dressed like no one else. You know, it, but we don't really find those. So it's really curious. And, and so what, what, wait a minute, what about the Ch Charlie Chapman one with the yeah, cell phone the, thing? The Is phone, that, I know. What, what, what about that? I what can't it, tell you that's a smoking gun proof because, yeah. first of all, there are crazy people who walk around cities and talk to themselves. We've all seen them. <laughs> we even no, know some, really? some of them. <laughs> no. Some of them co-host radio <laughs> and TV shows. Oh. Name ah, any names. Rhymes with ah. Ron Kolick. Ah. But so, <laughs> so the Charlie Chaplin thing you're talking about. Um, uh, he was filmed a, a movie premiere of. Uh, his film, I think it was uh, Circus, uh, Circus Circus or something. It was a silent movie, right? It was a silent movie, right. but he filmed the premiere when it, when it uh, uh, debuted in Hollywood. Uh -huh. And you see this woman walk by talking on something. And, you know, back then there were no transistor radios. There were no walkie-talkies. There were certainly no cell phones back then. Right. But she's talking on something. That being said, there were listening devices for people who were hard of hearing uh -huh. that you would hold, but you wouldn't talk into them. So is it possible that that is one of those listening devices and the person is not wrapped too tight and is just talking to, to some voices in her head? Sure, that is a possibility. Or maybe, you know, that camera inadvertently caught someone who was out of place and out of time. 
I accept that as a possibility too, because I think we have a lot of examples where, you know, um, you know, even the notion of deja vu. You know, are, are we are we catching? Are, are we? Is that just a minor hiccup in time? You know, something like you know, oh, I just walked in a minute ago and I'm here again. You know, maybe, right. maybe it's just a, a possibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of it though, it's how you interpret it. Sure. Which, I mean, because I mean, even in the. Uh, uh, hieroglyphs, they have uh, some hieroglyphs with someone, you know, with something up to their ears and they say, aha, this is proof that aliens were around and, and that's, that's their proof. But um, it, it's basically how you interpret We don't know, we certainly weren't there when they drew these hieroglyphs. No, and, of course. And, and we don't know what they commonly use. They could be picking their ears for all we know. <laughs> This is the fun of the paranormal. You get to ask these big questions. You know, when you talk about Bigfoot, you're asking, do we know every creature that walks the earth with us? When you talk about aliens, you're saying, are we alone in the universe? How far will, will our uh, technology advance, you know? And, and this is the stuff that, I mean, this is really, this is what the human experience is about. What legacy will we leave behind? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what do we know about the world and the universe around us? Like, this, these are the big things, the big ones, you know, mm -hmm. that I think everybody, I would hope, you know, uh, spend some time thinking about you know, going through uh, this, this, you know, this daily existence of ours. And us weird folks who are into the paranormal get to explore it openly and, and ask those questions. And, and you search for your own answers because at the end of the day, I, I truly, I gave up years ago trying to prove this to anyone. I'm just trying to prove it to me. Exactly. You know, I just want to understand my place. And, and I'm, I've got some answers over time, which has been cool. You know, I've been, I've been uh, having my own experiences that I can't explain with any other word other than ghost. You know? And that has changed because when I f first met Jeff, he told me he absolutely had no experiences. Yeah, that's true. It was and, a long time yeah, ago. And, and now, you know, he does have experiences yeah. to talk about. So, yeah, early on, I started as a newspaper reporter. And, you know, you try to be objective. Just I, I want the story, the history, and the eyewitness accounts. And, you know, you believe them or you don't. And, and that's fine. I wasn't calling anybody a liar. I, I even got to the point where I said, well, I believe that you believe, you know, th that you seem to have conviction. You went through something. Um, but I wasn't there. And then that changed for me in 2003 um, in Paris, France. I was uh, in the catacombs of Paris, and I was walking down a skull-lined hallway. You know, was this a time slip? No. Oh, were you really? <laughs> in I was really in Paris, uh, and uh, and I see this shadow the size of a man walk from the right side to the left and go back again. And I just froze, and I went, "All right, if that's not a ghost, I have no other word for this." You know, uh, and and then. The, the reality and the, and the gravity of all the interviews I'd conducted to that point, hundreds and hundreds back then, now thousands, uh, of people who went through similar experiences, I was just like, oh my God, I have no special abilities. I'm not psychic. I, you know, I don't even think I'm sensitive. But once I had that experience, I went, wow, the, 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 the gravity of everyone else's experience really sunk in too because I went, they probably felt the same way. Just they didn't ask for this. They weren't expecting it. It just happened. And, and you're left with some big implications. Personally, you say, all right, there's something more to all this. How do I live my life? Believing, now I believe, you know, that there's something that happens after we die. How am I gonna live my life? What legacy am I gonna leave? How do I wanna be remembered? Where will my ghost haunt? You know, these are, these are things you think about, you laugh about, you joke about, but, but they're out there somewhere. They're things that, that we kick around. Maybe it's more subconscious for some, but for people like us, it's quite conscious. We, we, we talk about it. And, and that's, uh, that's one of the best parts. And again, the discussion, which is so important, um, because there's so many factors. You know, like we said, it's not repeatable. If it was repeatable, we would have already held a news conference and said, okay, it'll be here in three, two, one, film it, yeah. go. But we can't do that. Um, the, the, the people in the room at the time changed the dynamic of, of the situation, the time of day, the time of year. The location, all of that is a different factor. And sometimes those stars line up, something weird happens, and you go, wow, you know, it's big. So when you had, you had this experience in Paris, was mm -hmm. that kind of the beginning of your journey um, as a journalist towards that, that paranormal avenue? No, no, it really wasn't. That started in the mid-90s. Um, mm -hmm. I was writing for newspapers and magazines, and I got hooked on ghost stories in mm -hmm. October, even though I, I hadn't had an experience yet. I grew up in an old New England town, and I had friends that said their houses were haunted. So we'd have sleepovers at age 10, and we'd break out the Ouija board oh, and, right. yeah. and you know, <laughs> try, to, try to make contact. So, I mean, I was around ghost stories. Uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren lived in the town next to me oh, um, yeah. growing up, so I knew them yeah. since I was 10, and I saw their presentations, and I thought they were fascinating. 
Um, and then October features, you know, it's not me weighing in on what I believe. It's just, hey, here's the history. And I always thought it was interesting that sometimes the history validated in, to some degree these experiences. I, I kind of sensed, my gut told me, something's going on. It's not just chance. Because when you have, you know, a bunch of different people that have similar experiences over a period of time, you know, you know, all reporting the same phenomenon, no connection with each other, you just, I mean, that's just being mildly observant. You know, that's not... Uh, any kind of gifted, you know, um, sense of, of uh, intuition or anything. It's just, wow, something weird is going but, on. And but a lot of times, it. too, don't we get deceived by the history as well? I mean, there's a, there's sure. a thing called, like, famous ghost syndrome. Yeah. And, and just because someone famous went to that house, they're the one haunted. Or someone yeah. died in the house, they, they're automatically the person that's haunted it, if, if there is a, a ghost there. Anything that we can't explain in life, anything, not even paranormal now, we want to fit every human experience into some kind of box. We have to for our own sanity. Every individual does that, you know. You meet someone who, was he flirting with me? Was she flirting with me? Is he mad at me? Is she angry at me? Does she hate me? You know, like, we, we try to fit every emotion, every experience into a box. So when we go into a house and we go, oh, my God, this place seems to be haunted. There's something bumping in the wall. And, you know, this is the Lizzie Borden house. Must be Lizzie Borden. <clears throat> Excuse me. Must be her ghost because... <laughs> She's damned to be here forever because she probably murdered her, you know, dad and stepmom. Um, it's an easy, it's an easy leap to make. Or maybe it's Andrew Borden or Abby Borden who are seeking, uh, you know, justice after all these years. No one was ever convicted of the crime. No one wants to hear it's the little old lady who died there in 1993 yeah. <laughs> right. who just was kind of attached to the place. Right. Or somebody she got hit in like the street it. by a streetcar. And <laughs> right, I right. come back, stick around. And then, and that's when, then the psychics jump in and they say, oh, well, I have magic powers. I can tell you who it is. It's, it's so-and-so. <laughs> and then another psychic with equally magical powers comes in and says, no, 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 no. That psychic's wrong. It's, it's, uh, it's actually the Borden children who died next door decades earlier, you know, and and so, um, so, but why are we fascinated in places like the Lizzie? I mean, you do events, legend tripping, yeah, right? At yeah. the at the Lizzie Boyden House. In fact, I think you've got one coming up in February. Yeah, February, our okay. dead of winter event. Yeah. But those are always packed. People mm -hmm. always want to go there. Why is that? Is it is it because of that that they're hoping to see Lizzie Borden? Or it, it's it's easy. There's a, if we take Lizzie Borden as our example, there's so many reasons. One. Going to any haunted place, any UFO landing site, any Bigfoot hotspot, number one, you want to become part of the story. You don't want to just be passively hearing it, watching it on TV, or reading about it. You want to become part of the story. Just by going there, you become part of the story. That's what legend tripping is. That's what every paranormal show you've ever seen, going back decades, all the way back to In Search Of and all that other stuff, they're legend tripping. They heard a story and they went to check it out. You can move that all the way to paranormal investigation where you break out the gear and you sit all night vigils and all that other stuff. But first and foremost, you heard a story and you want it to become part of it. You may go there and you say, ah, nothing happened to me. I think it's just bunk. Or you may go there and say, holy cow, something did go down. And it's not just a story. Lizzie Borden, number one, is an unsolved murder. Our society hates that, hates it with a passion. We don't like unsolved crimes, whether they're a week old or a year old or a hundred years old. Our society, especially murder, oh, that bugs us. We want to know who did it. Uh, you know, was it Lizzie? Probably, maybe not. You know, uh, what's the, and then and then why did she do it? You know, we want to we want to solve that mystery, even if all the players involved now are dead. Um, we still want to solve it. So you go there, and also too, a place becomes famous. We're infatuated with fame. You know, uh, we did Lizzie Borden on Ghost Adventures. You know, a few years ago, it's been on Ghost Hunters. It's been on My Ghost Story. It's been on pretty much every We've paranormal show. Yeah, yes. you've been there. We've even been there. You've oh even God. been there. It's been on every paranormal <laughs> show ever. So it's famous, and then you get to not only go to this renowned haunt, you get to go where Jason and Grant went, and where Zach, Nick, and Aaron went, and where. And on and in went, yeah. So, you know, you get to go become part of that story, too, and, and, yeah. and touch the things that everyone else touched. And, and lay on the couch. Right, the whole you know. pose. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Of course, and that's, <laughs> that's the infatuation. That's the draw. And, and also, too, I think a lot of people kind of want to have a ghost experience, but not at my house. <laughs> right? I want to go to Lizzie's for the night. go somewhere else to do that. Yeah. I want to go to Lizzie's for the night, have it happen around 11 or 12 o'clock, and then I run home screaming and I go, whoa, that was cool. When do I go again? You know? Um, it's thrilling. It's amazing. It's, and, and you know what? Sometimes that happens for people. A lot of times it doesn't. You know, you, you've been on enough investigations where 
you sit all night and absolutely nothing, nothing happens. happens. <laughs> but sometimes, really? well, yeah. mm. well, sometimes not around Ron. But apparently, uh, 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 it always happens at Ron's. And, yeah, and sometimes, you know, you get those moments that, for me, seem to come every few years. But it's enough. It's enough to, to keep you going. You know, um, where you say, "Wow, this is this is." This is big. This is this is real. You remember why you do it. I mean, I've I've been doing this now for so long. We do events all over the country, all over the world. You know, creepy old prisons, uh, to, you know, tuberculosis sanitariums, asylums, mm -hmm. and so on. You know, all these places that, that that you go through. And I mean, I've walked up and down old cell blocks, and I've been like, whatever, I don't care, it doesn't bother me. And then suddenly something happens, and you go, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's something going on here. It's for real, right. and and you get reminded, and you get renewed, and your interest is perked up again, and you're off to the next one. Mm -hmm. So, is this the? I mean, you have a new series that's coming out now called New England Legends. Yes. Is this the basis of what this new series is about? Yeah, New England Legends. We did it for PBS um, back over the summer, and the whole idea is to get into the story again. It's not a paranormal investigation. That's that's a big part of the point. It's really more about um, the, the folklore and legends and stories that make up our community and define uh, who we are, uh, especially New Englanders. You know, we share these tales. <laughs> don't we actually? Don't we have a uh, um, a clip trailer? Yeah. Would we like to see the trailer? Yeah. Can we see Jeff that trailer? trailer? Yeah. So th th this will give people a, a better uh, feel of what we're talking about. Sure. We can, can cue we that run up. Can we run the trailer, please? Ghosts, monsters, ancient mysteries, New England is full of these tales. But are they just stories? And what do they tell us about us as a people? My name is Jeff Belanger, and I'm here to tell you they're not just stories. These are New England legends. The idea is a Lynn Woods may be haunted by the ghosts of the pirates. Do spirits haunt places or people? Probably both. What do you think about a guy that digs for 30 years through solid rock and finds nothing? I think he's insane. Do you believe the mansion's haunted? I believe it's possible. You know, we like to think of it not so much as a secret society, as some people call us, but more of a society with secrets. Ever see a ghost? Myself? Um, I'm not sure what a ghost is, you know? Oh, um, come on. <laughs> come on. He was exhumed and moved in the 1970s. Really? You sure? Well, Sometimes it's... they just move the stones, right? That's what we I... all saw a poltergeist. When you're in a dense forest like this, you wonder, is that a bear? Is that some other kind of creature? Am I alone out here? Is something looking at me? In the 1970s, a witness reported seeing a UFO hover right over this lake and then shoot up into the sky. Yeah, it's just a really spooky place down there, you know, a spooky environment, uh, really wet and dark. Uh, you never know what's around each corner. I think in some cases a ghost is history demanding to be remembered. How would we ever know about this cemetery if not for a ghost story? The camera strap pulled down so I was facing the ground and then it ripped off and my camera bounced off the ground. Oh my gosh. Broke my camera. <laughs> then I had this red scratch that went across my neck. I just find it a little bizarre in the middle of a woods on top of a hill, you know. So think about it. Something died here, probably more than once, probably many times. The blood poured right where we're standing. And as I came down this hallway, out of the corner of my eye, there was somebody standing in the kitchen in front of the table. This isn't some ghost hunting show. I'm here for the experience of breathing in this legend. With every step, I'm becoming part of the story. And I never lose sight that maybe around the next corner, I'll have my own paranormal experience. Wow. You huh? live an exciting life. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. Wasn't that Nick from Ghost Adventures? That was Nick from Ghost Adventures. Um, it's been cool. You know, I've, I've worked with those guys now since 2008 as the writer and researcher for the series. Um, worked on 110 episodes of the show now, wow. which oh, is pretty wild. Wow. So it's been cool to, uh, to be a part of something that's that, that. This is our third show, by the way. Did I mention that? <laughs> yeah. I remember our third show back in, yeah. So, no, it's, it's, been, it's been fun to work with those guys, and, and they've been really supportive. And, um, you know, Nick's up in, in the New Hampshire area, yep. and I said, hey, you got to come see this place. So he came down and when we were, we were checking out America Stonehenge there in uh, Of course, you know, Jimmy. Ron is from that same area too, don't you? Yeah, and I, and I thought, you know, boy, it would be pretty uh -oh. amazing to get Ron on. But Nick has more Twitter followers. Oh. It just came down to that. There's yeah. nothing more than yeah. that. I understand He's that. He's not up on that new technology. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we have one quick question, then I want to go back to uh, New sure. England legends. And 
John in the TogiNet chat room would like to know if, Jeff, have you had any personal ghost experiences that you can tell us about? John, yes, I have. Well, didn't you really tell us? <laughs> oh, no, I just answered his question. What's wrong? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, no, there's been a few. I told you about um, the, the Catacombs of Paris, what right. I experienced there. Which is all made up, right? I'd do better than that, wouldn't I? Like if I, I had to so. make something up. Yeah. Um, but there's been um, there's been a couple. You know, sometimes they're they're very subtle. The experience that 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 shakes you up. We were at uh, Mansfield Reformatory in uh, Ohio, and there was uh, five of us down in the uh, administrative building. And this is the um, if you ever saw the movie Shawshank Redemption, that's this is where they filmed the movie. So it's oh, cool okay. on multiple levels, yeah. not just this crazy, creepy, huge, you know, spooky prison. Um, but famous from being in the movie. And we're in the administrative building, and there's these stairs. They go up about, you know, three-quarters of the way and then a little landing and up the rest. And five of us are watching someone walk back and forth. And there was a sign right on the, the, the landing that it would disappear. Like, you could watch legs go back and forth. And I said, wait a minute. You know, are we all seeing this? We all confirm we're seeing this. So I run up to the landing, and I said, well, maybe there's, like, light coming down from above, and someone walks by up top and casts the, their shadow down. And so, you know, you walk by, and you go up the stairs, and you go around. And the only time the letters got blocked is when I was literally walking right in front of it, and we could all confirm there was no one there. And oh, wow. that's what, it's one of those things where you just go, okay, all five of us saw this. All five of us reacted the same way. Um, you know, when you have an experience and you're, you're by yourself, you can always question your senses, your sanity. Am I overtired? Am I this? Am I that? Right. When it's a group experience, I don't believe in mass hallucinations. I just don't. I've never, ex I've never seen any evidence to, to convince me that. Oh, wait a minute. Well, go ahead. Seriously, there was, okay. And, and I know this is true because I saw it on TV. Um, well, it must be true. Yeah. So well, then you don't have to go anything beyond that. You've made your argument. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was actually a small town, and, and it was supposedly this woman that was hung in the cemetery yard Hanged. or whatever. She might have been hung, I don't know. But anyways, they, um, <laughs> they had her at a tree, right? And it was the whole crowd, they including the mayor, right? right. And they only had a filming crew with her. And they were there, and I said, oh, look, the psychic said, look, there she is. She's by that gravestone hanging up. And everybody looked and said, yeah, I see her, I see her. And, and the whole crowd was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So they, they looked at the film. There was nothing on the film whatsoever. I'm not aware of that particular experience, but uh, you know, I can tell you too, I've been on plenty of investigations where people want to see something so bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at one at Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky, where someone's looking down the hall and says, there's someone standing by the door. And I'm right next to him, and I said, I, I don't see it. And he's, nope, it's right there. And I said, I'll walk down the hall. You tell me to stop when I'm next to him. And I'm walking and walking and walking. Okay, stop. I'm looking and looking, and I don't see it. I, I have never experienced some kind of hallucination like that. So, do you, but there was this okay. other time right. at the at the, the same night at Waverly Hills, where there were four of us that were standing right in the bend of the building, and we're just talking. It's one in the morning. You know how it goes. You just start, you know, chatting about whatever. And this man stepped out of a room 15 feet away, and we all stopped talking at the same time. And I said, "Did you see that?" They said, "The guy that just stepped out of that room." Uh huh. We race down to the room because it's only like 15, 20 feet between us and the room, and everything's open at Waverly Hills. There's no glass. There's, it's just all open windows and everything. Right. And I know there was no one else up there to begin with, but maybe someone slipped in, so I'll give that like a 5% chance, but there's a 0% chance between seeing that person and us racing there, looking all around as we go, that someone could have escaped short of diving out a third-story window. Right. You know? And that's when you go, oh, man, we all saw the same thing. We all reacted the same way. You know, we all, we had this experience. It's, it's very validating for me. I, I just don't, um, I've never seen any kind of mass hallucination where I, on, an, on a paranormal investigation. The one you cited, okay, maybe a few people wanted to see something and they, they bought into, you know, trees blowing in the wind. But I've never experienced that, you know, wh where I saw it too, you know. Um, to me, if it's there, I'll see it. And it's only happened on like five times in 15 years of doing this. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is, is, is really, to me, I think the par paranormal experience is really a personal experience. I mean, because of course you, it is. Yeah. You always talk about, uh, and, and I've always retold it, I stole it from you actually. Oh, good. Um, Thanks for giving me credit. And no problem. Uh, I, I do mention your name in it. Oh, but shucks. you always talk about the time your grandfather died. And yeah. You went to, I mean, you, you want to retell that for us? Yeah, sure. Uh, um, when my grandfather passed in 2001, uh, it was early October, and um, he was a real character, funny guy, and I was close to him my whole life, both, uh, you know, 
geographically and, and emotionally and um, he was, you know, he'd drive around all the time and honk his horn at every damn thing, you know, just, <laughs> oh, I knew the squirrel, meep, meep, you know, and, um, and the day he died, I was sad. He was in his 80s. He died in his sleep, you know, considering we all got to go. It, it was as good an ending as you're going to get, but um, he, uh, y you know, he passed away, and I'm back in my apartment in New Haven, Connecticut that afternoon, and I'm crying, and I just said, just give me some kind of sign you're still with me, and not one second later, right outside, I hear, meep, meep, and I just went, I laughed and cried at the same time, and I oh. said, that's it, we're good, you know. Now, it's, New Haven, it's a city. It's a small city, but it's still a city, and cars beep day and night. But at that moment, that sign was for me and only for me, and, and I still believe it. You know, and, and anyone else can be like, come on, you know, coincidence. And, and, and if it weren't my story, I'd agree with you. But it meant something. And it's, and it's um, you know, we hear like pennies from heaven stories where, where mm -hmm. people write to me constantly where they say, I find pennies on the ground, and I know that's, that's my grandfather because right. he used to always give us kids pennies. And so that's a sign from Grandpa. And you go, well, gee, I find pennies on the ground, too. I don't really think anything of them because they have no significance to me. But they do to that person. And you start to realize that just as I would never judge the cross around someone's neck or the Star of David or the or crescent Jesus or the pentacle, oh, yeah, that Jesus I would judge. Shirt. Uh, I'm, and only because it's that loud, you know, <laughs> like n not for religious reasons, but uh, for fashion reasons I would judge. My nephews and niece made this when they were like three years old, so... Often. Okay. All now right. I feel yeah. bad, right. but only a little. <laughs> so I would never judge someone's someone's beliefs because it, it, it works for them, and it's and it's their reality, yeah. and it's their truth. You know, uh, truth is not universal. I mean, two plus two plus you know, two plus two equals four seems like it should be a universal truth, but you only got to find one person on Earth that just really doesn't believe it, and it ceases to be a universal truth, even though the overwhelming majority can agree on it. So let's go back to your uh, yes. New Plug England away. legends, right? And <laughs> are you seeking the truth with this? Or, or what, what is no. the goal of this? Show? <laughs> the truth, the truth is, is too elusive. The whole goal is is that a legend is always evolving. Every time new people come to it, it changes. One of the places we did was the Houghton Mansion or Houghton Mansion, as you call it. Yeah, <laughs> and only you. <laughs> so you've uh, been there. Do you right? want a tonic? <laughs> You want to wear some dungarees? <laughs> so, you, you know, you go, to the, uh, you go to the Houghton Mansion, and that story's changed since the first time you went there because more people have come to it. More people have had experiences. We've learned more about the history, about the family. Uh, photos came forward, all kinds of things. So all this is is a snapshot of right now, you know, because the, the legend is defined by the people that, that experience it, that live there, the community that the, the, the location resides in. And, and, and it'll change again tomorrow. So we just want to go there and we want to, you know, really appreciate and, and honor these legends because the legend itself is an indisputably real thing. It's a living, breathing thing. The legend is that, that, that story that we all contribute to that floats above the building, that floats above, you know, the Hockamock Swamp, that floats above all these places, the, the Lizzie Borden House and so on, that, that can't be argued. Whether there's life after death or what a ghost is or isn't, that's the stuff we can argue about. But the story itself that we, you know, that we, these places have a haunted reputation, it's indisputably true. And so we want to just take a snapshot of it today mm -hmm. because tomorrow it's going to change. And the next day it's going to change after that. Uh, and that's okay. There's no, it doesn't mean it's a lie. It doesn't mean it's not based on some, you know, paranormal reality for lots of people. Uh, but it is part of it. And so the whole idea is to get back to the story, to get back to the history, the backstory, and the, the actual experiences. And then we just walk around and see what happens. No night vision, no, no ghost gear, no, no EMF meters, because Thank if God. something's there, I know, it's been done. No, it's been done. And, it's, and, those, and mm -hmm. the, some of the shows on, on TV are great. I wouldn't try to be them. They, they already exist. Why, why try to be another one, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we just want to be the story. Mm -hmm. Now, one of, the, one of the snapshots, you'd sent us a few stills. Um, one of the things that I noticed was the Union Cemetery. Oh, yeah. Tell me about the Union Cemetery, So the, the Union Cemetery, <laughs> that's from my uh, calendar. I did a, a, a 2014 Haunted New England wall calendar, which is also proudly on there display there. Look at that gorgeous thing. And I oh. brought a copy for both of you just to grease the wheels Ooh. here. Aww. I know. So there is it is. Christmas y present. Union Cemetery. Uh, Frank Grace is the photographer on these, and he took that photo Frank well. is fabulous. So yeah. um, I grew up not too far from Easton, yeah, when, where I lived in Connecticut as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I remember this was one of the earliest ghost stories I heard was the White Lady of Easton. And she said to haunt this cemetery and the road right along both sides of it. And the stories ranged from just seeing a wispy white apparition in the cemetery to uh, a phantom hitchhiker kind of thing where she's going up and down the road. Uh -huh. Some versions people pull over to try to offer her some help 
or uh, in another version of the story, I heard you know a car hit her, was dented. The guy jumps out of oh. the car, going, "Oh my gosh, I just hit somebody!" And, but no one's there. But there's the. So dent. is this the kind of like Resurrection Mary story again? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. The haunted um, hitchhiker or whatever. Yeah, that story is not unique. Uh, it gets played over and over all right. over the world. Okay. And so, uh, you know, then you say, well, why the white lady? Well, you learn women used to be buried in their wedding dresses. And, you know, what's her backstory? We don't know. We don't know who she was. Um, with Resurrection Mary in Chicago, uh, this, you know, Ursula Bielski, one of the great resources out there for ghost lore in Chicago, you know, believes she's got a name. Uh, we don't have anything close to that in, uh, in Union Cemetery. But everyone knows it's haunted. And a great example, my brother-in-law, uh, who uh, uh, is a, an administrator at a school not too far from there, drives by it every workday going home. And he doesn't really believe in ghosts, and that's okay, no big deal. But what's so funny is he says, you know, I don't really believe in ghosts, but every time I drive by that damn cemetery, I admit, I look in <laughs> and I you go. You have to look. You have to look, and that's how powerful a story look. is, you know. You say, there's no such thing as ghosts. But I'm going to go ahead sure. and take a look as I sure. drive by because what if? You know, it's like every if, time you know. I do drive down Route 44 and, the and you know, uh, I'm looking around. Yeah. I'm like, where's the hitchhiker? That's right. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like, you know, what is it, 6 o'clock? What's the magic hour? Well, no, well, the, well right on the Sea Cup Rehoboth line, especially December, by the way, is, is right. a, his most prime evening, you know. Um, uh, so, yeah, it, it's a powerful story because you're going to look. You've heard about it yeah. enough that you want to check it out and, and, and become part of it. Every time my brother-in-law passes that cemetery and looks, he becomes part of that story. He can say, listen, I've driven by it, uh, you know, how many work days this year? Hundreds. And I've seen it <laughs> zero out of the hundreds. <laughs> but I still look. So The hundred and first time. <laughs> yeah. In, in reality, whether the legend is true or not isn't unimportant nope. because it now has a life of its own. Absolutely. And, and it's okay to appreciate these things. You know, I, one of the things I've noticed, I have noticed, I don't know if you have too, the, the, the skeptical community seems to have died down quite a bit. Oh, thank God. They, they were, no, but they were on the attack <laughs> against like ghost researchers for, for a few years. Ever. And I've, I've kind of noticed I haven't heard much noise on it lately um, I, for whatever reason. And, and it's okay. I welcome the debate. I truly do. But the, the funny thing is I remember talking to some skeptic friends and saying, why do you get so upset? Don't you love a ghost story too? Yeah. Like, can't you just appreciate right. it for that? Yeah. And I think that maybe, maybe there's just been this transformation and shift that a ghost can be whatever you want it to be. You know, if you need it to be grandma's spirit who's still around because she loves you and she's wishing you well, it can be that for you. If you want it to be just a story that people that aren't educated believe in, which, you know, I mean, that's... The, I don't, I don't buy into that, but I'm saying if that's the view you want to take, then go right ahead, you know. But the reality is there's a word for it in every language. People from all walks of life, you do these events too. You know, you talk to one person, oh, I'm a housewife. Oh, I'm a vice president at IBM. Oh, I'm a finance manager. Oh, I'm a priest. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a philosophy <laughs> professor in college, you know. And I have met, I, I've yet to find some kind of, uh, you know, focus group that isn't somewhat represented somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, at, at these events, at uh, conferences, at lectures that I give, everyone's there, you know, from, from every walk of life. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it, it's so interesting. Uh, you know, I, I used to remember every time that I would have any type of a, an article in the newspaper or whatever, mm -hmm. Joe Nichols would always show up. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, it's a guy that never met me, absolutely knew nothing about me, but he was more than free uh, more than willing to uh, comment on whatever. Yeah. And oh yeah, these part-time uh, ghost clubs. Uh, it's like you don't even know me. You don't, first of all, I don't do it part-time. Hello. Sure. <laughs> Could you do that? Well, you know, he is an English professor, so I mean, you well, know, he does have credentials in that thing. You but. know what's funny? Um, I used to around but, Halloween. But I why is that important that we have that other? Oh, because well, the, I mean, you know, newspapers want to sell newspapers, you know, mm -hmm. and. And, and they want to try to present both sides. I used to um, end up being on a debate with uh, James Randi, the amazing Randi. Uh, you know, we used to get, uh, no, I love him. He's great. I, I've, I've interviewed him. I think he's great fun. And, I, and you know, I, I respect him. Hey, listen, some of the double-blind experiments he conducts with people should be done. You say you have magic powers. He says, prove it. That's, I, I don't disagree with that. But I don't make any claims of magic powers, you know, other than regular observation, eyes and ears, you know. Mm -hmm. And for me to say I saw a ghost and you to say, no, you didn't, well, that's just stupid. That's like me saying, 
well, there's no way you had cornflakes for breakfast. You had, you know, yogurt. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what are you, you weren't even there. Or like, exactly. what are you calling me a liar? I mean, yeah. it's that frustrating. Mm -hmm. So, so that, I think maybe both sides are learning. There's no point in having that argument. It's not even fair or logical or anything. You know, it's someone's human experience. But, but, but if you make a bold claim, like I can do this, you know, magical right. thing, that's fine. So anyway, so Randy and I uh, would often get quoted in the same article. And I'd even refer him to newspaper reporters. Like, who can I interview on the other side? I'd be like, James Randy, here's his number. <laughs> and uh, I, but I'd always say, like, James Randy, here's the difference between, you know, Randy and myself. He's going to tell you that he knows what happens after we die. And I'm going to tell you I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So you tell me who's the better skeptic, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> you know, I, and, and that was often the last line of the article, which was great. But, um, but at the same time, like, I really don't know what happens. I can't tell you. We what, don't. No, no one knows. I have no idea. But, we but, don't even know what ghosts are. Nope. Right. We have no clue. Well, but, no until well, you get there. <laughs> I kind of know what they are. You know, in, in reality, do do we really know what a ghost is? Yes. And, and do you know what a ghost is? Uh, not really. I've never seen one. I do. Uh, and why do you know what a ghost is? A ghost is a connection to our past, and it's a way for living people to bond in the present, and it's a way for people to speculate about their own inevitable future. That's what a ghost is. It's a good answer, actually. Thank you. I've been doing this a while. <laughs> but in, in, <laughs> in reality, there can be ghosts of living people. Sure, doppelgangers, of course. Uh, you know, to me, that's the, that's the all-encompassing definition. That's the cool thing I love about this, Jeff. There's always sure. but a but. Of a course, but. of course. Yeah, ghosts of living people, dead people. You know, who knows? Maybe yeah. people not born yet. We, we or people no that never existed. That's right. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Do or we? these thought forms, these tulpas, these ideas that yeah. maybe we create them uh, from our own minds. I, you know, so many possibilities. The human experience is full of things that we can't define that we don't fully understand. How do you define love? How do you define humor? How do you mm -hmm. define pain? You know, like if I stab you oh, in the arm so. with a needle, which I'm going to very soon. <laughs> um, that's the big ending. <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, we kill so wrong. You, you know, you'd say, ouch. And everyone in the audience would go, yeah, but that hurt, you know, but how much did it hurt? Well, what's the scale of one to 10, Ron? And you give me some number and someone else would be like, oh, that's not a seven, that's a two. I can handle that. Or someone else would say, that's a 12, you know? It's, we all understand pain because we've all experienced it, yet we can't define it. We can't put it in a, in a jar and measure it, even though every human on Earth, unless you have some neurological disorder that prevents you, you know, every human has, has experienced physical pain or emotional pain, you know, and so on, even though we can't quantify it in any way. I know we're getting down to the end of the show. All right, so, so are we ready I, for the song and dance now? I have a couple of <laughs> questions. Do we, we do you that? have actually 60 seconds to answer them. Oof. There we go. 60 so, seconds. Uh, do we have somebody who can keep an eye on the clock for? I'll me? do it in thirty. Okay, okay. we're well, good. All right. All right. All right. So let's let's start off with a, a real. Can I first say that I too am a huge Doctor Who fan, and oh, thank you. I love your Weeping Angel. Uh, I'm afraid to blink though, because every time you blink, you know they get closer. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Sorry. Go okay. on. Okay. Yes. Okay. Anyways, so you have sixty seconds. Yep. Ready. What is a knob? It's a round spherical object. Next. <laughs> object. <laughs> So you're saying it has mass then? Sure. The basketball's an orb. Uh, a soccer ball's an orb. The sun is an orb. You know what we're talking about. We're talking about the light I answered your question. What else you got? Move on. That's what an orb is. Fine. Be that way. <laughs> I answered it. You're not going to answer it, are you? I just did. <laughs> Okay. Well, next. Me, next okay. question. Next. You know what? I, I'll, oh. I'll, I'll give you this oh, one. Oh, no, next I'll, question. I'll give you no, more. I'll get the next question. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Jeff, a lot of people uh, show me photographs with uh, these orb-like lights on them. What are those, Jeff? 99.99999999% uh, of the time, those are uh, lens flare, which happens when your, your uh, multiple lenses get sort of near a light and they, they, ref they reflect and they create these little balls, or moisture, or dust, or bugs. Um, the, the, the exception to the rule is when something's producing light. Producing light means it illuminates stuff around it. I've seen two video clips uh, in my life that show glowing balls of light moving around uh, sort of slowly in, in, a, in a backyard setting and as it would go by the tree, the tree would light up from the light and then it would go and it would move. It wasn't... they call lightning bugs. Yeah, not like this thing. Flashlight? It, it was a ball of light that was self-illuminating. Mm -hmm. That I couldn't explain. And I know people that have seen them with their naked eye, even if they didn't happen to have a camera ready. Yeah. But the stuff I see in photos, I, I delete them when they're on my camera mm -hmm. as, as like, oh, junk. 
because I've gotten really good explanations as to why they occur. Okay, time up. Too bad. Should have no. stuck with your round thingy. That or was whatever. right too. <laughs> Go ahead. Whatever. Whatever. Jeff. Yes. What enhances paranormal activity? Uh, narcotics. <laughs> Next. <laughs> One question answers. Uh -huh. That's not really. I mean, that's an answer. Okay. What enhances paranormal activity? Right. Is there anything, for instance, that I can make ghosts happen? Well, not necessarily ghosts, but any type of paranormal activity. Yeah, sure. You'd be highly susceptible to stimuli, which could include narcotics, you know, or, so, or maybe you just watched a bunch of so scary movies. Basically, you're saying that, that this is the, the person, you're stimulating the person rather Always. than, than the, the object or whatever. Or the environment. Or the environment. The environment's interesting because I know there's people that, uh, you know, Bill Chappell makes the EM pump, which, right. you know, creates uh, white noise machines, stuff like that. Um, to me, that's creating uh, variables. I like mm -hmm. to remove variables. I want to explain away everything I can, so then what's left is, uh, is something paranormal. But to me, if you're going to stimulate the activity, you've got to stimulate the person, whether you're wa they're watching scary movies, narcotics, makes, or whatever. Makes perfect sense. And, and I know we're running out of town, but I have this special object I brought in for yes. you. Yes. We're going to smoke that, right? Yes, we are. <laughs> have you ever heard of psychometry? I have. Okay. So... For those who don't know, psychometry is being able to read the energy of an object. So I would like you to hold on to this. Okay. And you have to, whatever you think of comes into mind, you just have to. And so you can hold on that for a few seconds. All right. And, and you can do it ver uh, as you hold it. Tell it whatever comes in your mind. Whatever comes in my mind. Besides food. I was going to say that. I was <laughs> totally Psychic. going to. You can't be. It's really good. Uh, I believe this is um, one half of Ho Chi Minh's chopsticks. I knew this wasn't going to work. I, no, seriously, I, when you hold something, anything immediately come to I, I, I'm, but But it was more aesthetically, I, railroad spike is, is all I could think of. But that's because of what it looks so like. So nothing like feels. just popped in your mind, nothing? No. Okay. You're a lousy psychometrist. I know, I'm terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did I cover that touch it again? Did I not say earlier I have no magic powers? Would it's you like it's to... not the magic powers. Psychology is, is really something that's near and dear to my heart. It's basically holding on an object, and whatever comes to mind on it, is, no matter how stupid it sounds, how ridiculous, right. whether it's an odor or a, or a color or whatever, and you just, yeah, well. So tell I, me, what's the, tell me the story behind the object. Uh, this is actually... Hurry up. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, we're running, running out of time. Okay, this actually came from a, a shipwreck off of um, um, Biddeford Pool, uh, the lighthouse on Wood okay. Island, and uh, it was an old-fashioned ship, and that's it, basically. I got none of that. Okay. <laughs> so it's not that, that I, like that's okay. the reason. Oh, we got to wrap it up. Yeah. Wrap it up. Yeah. All right. Thank you for joining us. Come we'll on, see you next Colette. time on Ghost Chronicles. So, oh, that you say that. No, that's fine. You can go out. <laughs> Roll the credits. Wrap it up, B. No, it was fun. Thank you Jeff, guys for having I me. I want to thank you yes. so much. Wow. Wow. That was rude. You're bad. And you it don't was. get a calendar Jeez. now. Oh, damn. Oh, I'll, I'll take his calendar. I got the other one. Thank you, yeah. Jeff. You're welcome. Anyways, Jeff, this has been Jeff Belanger of jeffbelanger.com, uh, ghostvillage.com, and Legend Trippin'. Uh, if you want to find out more about Jeff, you can certainly go to our Facebook page, which is what, Ed? Uh, Ghost Chronicles Next Generation. Who's Ed? Ed? I don't know. Whatever. No. I don't I know what he just said to me. Again. Yeah. Okay. So, but are we done? Thanks for, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. We're done when we're and done. we want to thank our, our studio audience. Thank you. Thank you to our studio audience. Nate. So, stay <laughs> tuned next month, which won't be the first. It'll be the day after the first. Um, a week after the first. Good night. Uh, God yes. bless all that. <laughs> Good night, everybody, and thanks for watching. There you go.
From goalies to ghosties, long leggedy beasties, and things that go bump in the night. Deliver us, good Lord.